I was born on the 17th of May, 1993, in a small town in Cornwall. Not that I would know, of course. That's just the date on my birth certificate. My twin sister, Drew, and I spent most of our childhood in and out of foster care. We never knew our biological parents, but the social workers always made sure we were adopted together. By the time we were thirteen, we'd already had three adoptive families. We were used to homes having an expiration date, so when we were adopted by the Murphy family, Drew refused to unpack her suitcase for the better half of the month. It's not like we'll be here very long anyway, she said one night. Miss Murphy's a piece of work. I couldn't argue with that. Out of the three adoptive families we had previously, this one seemed the least promising. Miss Murphy was an old-fashioned woman in her early fifties. She had a strict, no-nonsense attitude and was convinced that structure and discipline was exactly what children like us needed. Her husband was often away on business, so we had only seen him a handful of times. One good thing about being adopted by the Murphys was that I no longer had to go to school. I'd had severe troubles with it in the past, so Miss Murphy allowed me to be homeschooled on the condition that I'd take the work seriously. Drew, on the other hand, was happy to go to school and always returned with new stories to tell me. Melissa was making fun of me in the bathroom today, she said, scornfully, plopping down on my bed. So I tripped her up on the way to the chalkboard. I chuckled. Do you get in trouble? No, no one saw. She smiled viciously. How's the work going? It sucks, I admitted, scanning the algebra books strewn across the floor. Math's hard, and Miss Murphy expects me to do it myself. Huh, Drew said, peering over my shoulder. Well, you can finish it later. Let's do something fun. Like what? Dunno. She blew a strand of hair out of her face. Want to check out Miss Murphy's room? I felt intrigued. Mr. and Miss Murphy's bedroom was the only room we hadn't explored since our arrival. We had tried once, but were caught red-handed sneaking down the corridor. Miss Murphy was pretty irritated with us that time and said that their bedroom was off-limits. Drew must have noticed my hesitation. She's downstairs making dinner, she said. She'll never know. Well, I suppose if we're quick about it. I shrugged. Great. Drew was already at the door, and I followed her, looking around warily. We tiptoed down the hallway and tried the handle. It was unlocked, and the door opened with a slight creak. It was a bedroom like any other. A double bed, a mahogany dresser, and a wardrobe. That was it. Drew wrinkled her nose, and I knew she wasn't satisfied. She marched over to the wardrobe and flung it open, scanning the contents. The dresser was next. Drew pulled each drawer open with striking force, and I winced every time I thought I heard footsteps on the stairs. Drew, be quiet. She'll hear us. I hissed. But she took no notice. Lucky here. She turns to me with a victorious smile. At first, I didn't know what to look at. The drawer was piled high with multicolored garments. Drew was practically squealing with laughter by the time I noticed it. Peeking out from under the sleeve of a red sweater was a small, cylindrical object with a metallic base. Al and Drew, Miss Murphy called from downstairs. Dinner. I held my breath as Drew doubled over with laughter. Enough. Let's go, I said, shutting the drawer and hurriedly pulling her towards the door. She was still giggling as we entered the kitchen. Drew, shut up, I said, blushing. Miss Murphy looked at us, but said nothing. Did she know what we had done? How's the homework going? She asked as we sat down at the dinner table. It's all right, I lied. Drew was much better at math than I was. I knew she would help me finish the sums. Would you like to go to the cinema tomorrow? Miss Murphy said, stirring her soup. They're showing a new film about dinosaurs. But dinosaurs are so boring, 
Drew retorted. Why can't we see the alien movie instead? I don't like aliens. I said. Uh, can't you go see it with someone from school? But I haven't made any friends. She pulled a face. All the kids are snobby and stuck up. Well, maybe if you wouldn't trip them up, someone might actually want to be friends with you. I said. Drew stuck her tongue out at me. Listen, I think it's time we had a little chit-chat. Miss Murphy said, nervously picking at the hem of her apron. Drew shot me an angry look. I knew I shouldn't have told on her. I don't know how things were in your previous homes, but in this family, we value honesty over pandering. Oh God, here we go, Drew sighed. I knew she was already thinking about where she put her suitcase. Now, I've tried to be patient, Miss Murphy began. I understand that your situation has been less than ideal, but this is your home now, and I want to try and make things work. Drew kicked me under the table. Ow! Drew, stop! Listen to me. It's normal to have imaginary friends at a young age, but you're almost fourteen now. Miss Murphy placed her hand gently on my shoulder. I gawked at her. I don't have imaginary friends. Miss Murphy looked gravely uncomfortable. You must understand. She spoke softly. Drew isn't real. I looked at her, and then at Drew sitting on the chair next to me. I wondered if perhaps Miss Murphy wasn't in her right mind. I... What do you mean? She's my sister. You adopted us. You just called us both down for dinner. I noticed a glint of tears in her eyes. No, darling. I only called you. Your name is Alan Drew. I've never been very good at conveying my feelings, so describing the way I felt after Miss Murphy confronted me at the dinner table is virtually impossible. After she had told me that my own flesh and blood was a product of my imagination, my first thought was to contact my social worker and inform her that our new parent had meddled with her psych evaluation results. Drew had been with me since birth. We had taken our first steps together, gone to school together, and spent countless sleepless nights comforting each other and telling each other stories. After having my pride stripped away by the ward of the state... She was the only person I had left. How on earth was I supposed to make myself doubt her existence? That night, I had left Miss Murphy crying at the kitchen table and returned to my room with a lump in my throat. I sat on my bed, attempting to picture my life from a different perspective. What if Miss Murphy was telling the truth? What if I was the crazy one? The thought sent ripples of pain through my body. Was that the reason my former families had given me up? A knock on the door interrupted my thoughts and made me jolt upright. Knock, knock. Drew was hovering in the doorway. May I come in? She had always been very brash, so it was unlike her to ask. I must have nodded, because she crept into the room and perched on the edge of my bed. How are you feeling? She asked, clasping her hands together. I stared at her, at a loss for words. After hearing what Miss Murphy had to say, I wasn't sure I was supposed to respond. Third time's the charm, they say. She tried again, her eyes twinkling callously. Who knew we'd end up with this lunatic? I sat still, studying my hands and twisting my fingers until my muscles ached. You don't actually believe her, do you? Her tone was suddenly sharp. Alan, she's raving mad. Anyone can see that. I looked at her, my eyes brimming with tears. There she was, with her chestnut hair tucked behind her ears, looking just as real as anyone else. I've been thinking. I began, gathering my courage and trying to maintain my composure. Of all the times you asked me to order for you at a restaurant, 
You said you were too shy. Was that a lie? She opened her mouth to speak, but I didn't wait for her to respond. Or the time I asked you to take the dog outside, and you ran away? Alan. Drew shot me a warning look, but I took no notice. And what about the time you sang at the nativity play, and no one clapped? Drew sat, motionless. You don't believe me, she whispered. You don't believe I'm real. Tears rolled down my cheeks and dripped into my lap. No, I'm sorry, Drew. I don't. Drew showed up less and less after that. She had knocked on my door several times in an attempt to restore our relationship and make amends, but I had always blocked my ears and shut my eyes, telling her to go away, until she did. I had opened up to Miss Murphy about my struggles, and felt pleased to know she wholeheartedly supported me. Before I knew it, I was all grown up, and had found a place of my own. Miss Murphy had been kind enough to lend me some money to start me off, and had helped me move my things into an apartment on the other side of the city. The flat was spacious and airy, but significantly too large for a single college student. Two bedrooms and a dining room seemed like overkill, so I put up an ad online in search of a roommate. Soon enough, I had received several replies. I ended up choosing a student of a similar age to move into the bedroom adjacent to mine. His name was Luke. Luke was exceptionally social and frequently invited friends over to hang out. I didn't mind, of course, as long as he gave me a heads up beforehand. He would always ask me to join them, but I almost never did. I preferred my own company, and mostly kept to myself in my bedroom, playing video games and catching up on my homework. One night, I woke up extremely thirsty and made my way to the kitchen to get a glass of water. As soon as I opened my bedroom door, however, I heard voices in the kitchen. I wondered if perhaps Luke had invited friends over and had forgotten to tell me. I remember thinking it strange, as it was a Wednesday night, and we both had lectures the following day. As I got close enough to discern the voices in the kitchen, I realized that Luke had a lady friend over, which was likely the reason he hadn't told me. I decided it was probably best not to disturb them, and had a drink from the bathroom sink, before heading back to bed. The following morning, I woke up early and went to the kitchen. Luke was already there sitting at the table and reading the newspaper, as he usually did. Morning, I said. How was your date? I had meant this in a joking way, of course, but Luke looked at me dumbfounded. What day? he demanded, biting into his toast. Don't play dumb, I scoffed, opening the fridge. I heard you two talking last night. There was a moment of silence. Oh, that, he said. I don't believe you're in a position to be asking questions. I looked at him, taken aback. What? Was all I could manage. Well, how come you didn't tell me? His tone was confrontational, and in spite of myself, I felt my skin prickle. I, I tell you what? I asked. He looked at me incredulously. Now your sister moved in. What do you mean my sister moved in? I stared at Luke, feeling the blood draining from my face. He looked at me with concern. Are you okay, Alan? You look like you've seen a ghost. I felt like it, too. Thoughts whirled in my mind and refused to make sense. I grabbed the edge of the table for support and repeated my question through gritted teeth. Well, I found her in the kitchen last night after I came in to get my vitamins, he said, studying my reaction. She said her name was Drew and that she'll be staying with us for a while. I assumed you already knew. 
I slumped down on the wooden chair and buried my face in my hands. Alan, what's wrong? He sounded alarmed. She is your sister, right? My mouth felt as dry as a cotton ball. So, you can see her too? I asked. Luke stared at me, perplexed. Why wouldn't I be able to see her? Because... I began, but then reconsidered. I didn't want Luke to think I was crazy. I didn't know him that well, so I couldn't anticipate his reaction. He didn't even know I had been adopted. Because? He raised his eyebrows, curiously. It's... nothing, I said, hurriedly getting up from the table. Where is she? Drew? Luke's eyes were like saucers. She said she'll be staying on the couch in the living room. Apprehension flooded over me. What was the meaning of this? Had Miss Murphy been lying to me all these years? Luke had spoken about Drew as though she was a living, breathing being. So that meant she had to be real, right? Hiya, a familiar voice said as I peeped through the living room door. You can come in. Drew was sitting cross-legged on the couch and mashing the buttons on the remote control. I should think so, I retorted. It's my living room. We stared at the TV screen in silence. What are you doing here, Drew? I finally asked. She looked wounded. What's that supposed to mean? She cried, pulling her knees to her chest. I haven't seen you in years. We've been over this, I said sternly. I just want a normal life. Is that what this is? She sniffled. You even got a new roommate. I couldn't help myself. How come he can see you? I blurted out. She looked indignant. I told you, Al. Miss Murphy has a screw loose. She ripped us apart, filling your head with all that rubbish. I didn't answer. Miss Murphy had been patient and generous with me. I felt forever in her debt. Well... You can't stay here, I told her. I knew Drew's short temper only too well, but I wasn't going to be swayed this time. It's only for a little while, she pleaded. You can't throw me out. I returned to my room with a lump in my throat. It had been years since I'd last seen Drew, and here she was, watching TV in my living room, as if nothing had ever happened. With shaky fingers... I picked up my phone and dialed the only number I knew by heart. Hello? Miss Murphy's voice came through the line. Alan? Yeah, it's me, I assured her. I have to ask you something. What is it? I took a deep breath. Is... is Drew real? I shut my eyes, anticipating the response. Miss Murphy was silent, and for a moment I wondered if we had been disconnected. What's wrong, Alan? There was an edge to her voice. I... I... can you just answer my question? I could feel droplets of sweat forming on my upper lip. She sighed. Darling, you know Drew is your middle name. What's happened? I summarized the morning events the best I could, stumbling over my words and gesturing wildly with my arms. Luke told me this morning, I said, and he can see her too. Miss Murphy hesitated. Perhaps I could come see you tomorrow afternoon, she said. We could talk more about it then. I nodded into the receiver. You can, but... Luke will probably be having one of his weekly get-togethers in the evening. That's all right, she said. I'll just drop by. Miss Murphy arrived at about 6 p.m. the following evening. I had warned Luke and his buddies not to get too rowdy, 
as I didn't want her to get the wrong impression. He had agreed and ushered all of his friends into the kitchen, letting us have some privacy. Drew had refused to leave, however, and loitered in the living room, so I led Miss Murphy into my bedroom, shutting the door behind us. How are you feeling? Miss Murphy asked as soon as we sat down. I'm all right, I said, as a muffled pop came from the kitchen, followed by a subdued cheer. Sorry about the noise. Luke's having a party. Miss Murphy nodded, studying me carefully. Luke is the roommate you told me about, she asked. Yeah, I said, fiddling with my pocket zipper. He moved in about a month ago. Miss Murphy took a deep breath. Listen, Alan. The reason I came over is to check if you're okay, she said. You sounded awfully distraught over the phone. I stared at her, unsure of what to say. Have you been taking your medication? Her tone was very serious. I winced. There was a long, tense silence. I haven't, I admitted. Miss Murphy's face fell. But everything was fine up until yesterday, I promise, I said, trying to salvage the situation. This was the first time I've seen Drew in years. I heard the kitchen door open and the shuffle of feet in the hallway. A knock on my bedroom door signaled that the kitchen was no longer occupied. It's all right, they're just leaving. I chuckled, but Miss Murphy looked paler than ever. Alan, she whispered. What's the matter? I said, a chill crawling up my spine. Her eyes were brimming with tears as she reached for her phone. There's nobody there. I felt like I had been punched in the stomach. Despite chills running through my body, sweat was pooling under my arms as I gawked at Miss Murphy, bewildered. This couldn't be happening, I thought. Not again. My mind had betrayed me so many times before. I felt like a lunatic. I leaned against Miss Murphy's chest, sobbing heartily, as she rocked me back and forth. What's wrong with me? I cried, dabbing my sleeve over my blotched face. Nothing's wrong with you, darling. Her voice was soft and soothing. You just need to take your medicine. I squinted through my tears to see the bottle of pills sitting on the bedside table. You mean that neither Drew or Luke is... I couldn't say the word. She rubbed my arm reassuringly and nodded. This is your apartment, she affirmed, reaching for the bottle of pills and shaking one into her palm. Here, take this. You'll feel better. I swallowed the pill and sank into my pillow, overwhelmed by the day's events. I couldn't wrap my mind around Miss Murphy's words. My whole existence seemed to be in question, and I was afraid that soon I wouldn't be able to discern my reality from the truth. Miss Murphy? I said, staring up at the ceiling. Yes, Alan. She turned her head to look at me. Will I have to be... I swallowed. Admitted. She hesitated. No, I shouldn't think so. She tried to sound positive. As long as you take your medication. I nodded, drawing my gaze back to the ceiling. I'd have to take it. My reality has become too dangerous, and my senses completely unreliable. I couldn't run the risk of making a fool of myself in public. Or worse, getting detained for my psychotic behavior. It's time for me to go now, Alan, Miss Murphy said, 
gathering her belongings and making her way towards the door. Get some rest. Thank you, I whispered, for coming. Her eyes were filled with sympathy. I'll call you tomorrow, she said, closing the bedroom door. I laid in bed, mentally categorizing the events of the past week, month, year. I felt like a character in a movie. Everything I knew was a simulation. My roommates, my friends, and even my sister were nothing more than animated puppets in my mind, meddling with my reality and life as I knew it. As I heard Miss Murphy close the front door, I remembered that Drew was still in the living room. One way or another, I had to get rid of her. With heavy steps, I made my way there, praying silently that the medication had already taken effect and I wouldn't find her. I opened the door and scanned the room. It was empty. No sign of Drew. I heaved a sigh of relief and leaned against the doorframe. Miss Murphy had been right. What on earth had I been thinking, not taking the medicine? I clearly needed it. I felt a wave of calmness wash over me. I was going to get better. I was going to survive this, just like I had survived that fateful day years ago, when I had found out my sister wasn't real. Voices outside the living room caught my attention. My apartment was on the first floor, so I could easily hear the noises coming from the street. I walked over to the window and looked outside. A tree was blocking my view, but I could see a group of people standing behind it. I cracked the window open and leaned slightly to the left. My heart sank. It was Miss Murphy. She was rummaging through her purse, frantically searching for something. Standing, nonchalantly, in a half-circle beside her, were Drew and Luke. I, I swear I had it on me. Miss Murphy sounded panic-stricken. Drew was tapping her foots on the pavement. We don't really care. We just want our cut, she said. I felt like I was having an out-of-body experience. There they were, the people closest to me, all together, all talking, as though they didn't have a care in the world. You'll get your cut. Miss Murphy was irate now placing the contents of her purse in a neat pile on the sidewalk. I must have left it inside. What? What were they talking about? I felt faint. Well, go back in and get it then, Luke retorted. We don't have all day. Alarm bells went off in my mind. Miss Murphy was about to come back to my apartment to retrieve something she had apparently left behind. I shut the window and bolted back to my room, looking around desperately for anything out of place. Nothing caught my eye at first, and I panicked, picturing Miss Murphy climbing up the stairs, about to let herself in the door at any second. Then I saw it, a black rectangular box peeking out from a couple of photo albums. Upon closer inspection, I realized it was a camcorder. I grabbed it off the shelf and stuffed it inside my sweatshirt pocket, just as the front door flung open and Miss Murphy barged in. She was out of breath and red in the face, which got even redder as she saw me watching her from the center of my room. Alan, she cried. I thought you'd be asleep. I said nothing. Are you all right, dear? She said her eyes drifting toward the bookshelf. She exhaled sharply and noticed the camcorder was missing. Alan, there was a... a camera, I said, pulling it out of my pocket. She tensed up, a vein appearing in her forehead. Alan, give that to me. She kept her voice low, despite the hue of her face. No. I waved it at her. Why don't we watch it together? 
I took several steps backward to my desk, not wanting to turn my back on her. I knew I could easily overpower her if it came to it. Alan, please, she said. Let me explain. I stared at her, silently. She dropped her purse and put her hands on her chest. We were very poor when we adopted you and Drew, she began, tears welling up in her eyes. We struggled to make ends meet. I watched her, despondently. My husband, Mr. Murphy, had found a doctor who offered us monthly payments in exchange for... She sobbed. For testing and experimental medication. I felt dread creeping up my spine, but said nothing. They were particularly interested in sets of twins, she said, almost apologetically. I thought it would benefit all of us. All of us. I repeated the words slowly. Yes, she nodded. Drew wasn't supposed to know, but she heard me discussing it with Dr. Morgan over the phone and demanded a share of the money. That's how we came up with this arrangement. We needed to find a way to keep you on the pills. When Luke told me you hadn't been taking them, I sent Drew over to fight our cause. I swallowed. Is that why she came here? I said to convince me I was sick. Miss Murphy flushed. The experiment went on longer than we had expected, she said. Dr. Morgan said the medication might have lasting effects. What? What do the pills do? Miss Murphy winced. You mustn't stop taking them, Alan. What? Do they do? I demanded, staring her dead in the eye. She sighed. They maintain a uh, balance in your brain, she said, wringing her hands nervously. I broke out in a cold sweat. Which means... Miss Murphy took a few steps back. They keep you from going crazy, she whispered. <laughs>